This says, toilets are white supremacist. Here we go. Hi, it's Luna, activist teacher here. And I just got done reading a book about racism. And did you guys know that um, going to the bathroom on the in a toilet and indoor plumbing is actually from white supremacy and colonialism? So when the white colonists what book is that? Uh, saw the indigenous that they were digging holes in the and going to the bathroom outside... They said that that was more like animals, and uh, the white colonists decided to have indoor plumbing and toilets to use the bathroom. And so I just I just want you to recognize that whenever you are using a toilet, you're basically paying homage to uh, white supremacy and white colonists. I'm lactose intolerant. Stop. Is anyone tired? You're paying homage to white supremacists if you have to take a shit or pee. And like you said, what am I supposed to do with this information? Don't go to the bathroom now? You kind of already know that she believes that based upon, I mean, just look at her. She's indoors by herself when the BLM <laughs> that mask four years after COVID started. Man, you could take it off. Like uh, in your own house, right? I thought you could take it off when you get to your house. She's the type that'd be having it on in the car. Or walking outside. We keep seeing that. I'm not a medical professional, but you lost me when you had it outside by yourself. We see it. We Go, we filming and stuff. There'd be kids on the scooters going like 90 miles an hour with the mask on. That COVID not traveling can't touch you. I think some people, they like, you can't save them. You gotta just let them there permanently. They just want the peace of mind. Luna is a satire character that I made up to mock leftists, but it's too close to reality because their insanity knows no bounds. You're welcome. Oh, okay. That was a skit. But you know what? It got us. No, I was like, damn. I mean, I get it, you know, it's uh, but how many many people are wearing the BLM mask indoors by themselves? And saying things that aren't true. And Lots of people. Well, we just want, reacted to a lady saying that um you're a white supremacist if you're on time. This is actually not off. And shout out to her. All right, this one is not satire. Nutritionist says dieting and eating three meals a day is based in white supremacy and racism. Um, That the three meals a day thing, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, is from colonialism. I've been waiting for this day continuously. Um... If you don't know me, please go check out my page. I talk a lot about diet culture and its roots in white supremacy, racism, and just whiteness in the food system as a whole. And this person really articulated it well. And also thank you for sharing this book. What is so amazing about that book and also what's being discussed in that video is it really articulates how whiteness has infiltrated the way that we view and address our hunger cues because we are trying to adhere to very strict schedules that our bodies didn't, you know, they were not created to immediately adhere to. Like, you don't come out the womb being like, I will only eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Society tells you only eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And that wasn't satire. So yeah, it was the same thing. <laughs> What'd you say? Hunger cues are based in white supremacy. When I come out the womb, I don't know what's wrong, what's right. I have to be taught something. Somebody has to shape me into something. And then someone replies here, we don't fall out of the womb thinking I'm gonna put clothes, socks, and shoes on, but here we are. Can we get rid of that also? Yeah, this no. stuff is so unbelievable. And it's getting views, like 1.6 million views. You probably just convinced a small percent of like, facts. Facts. But I thought about stuff like this. There's a commonality between all the people who s say stuff like this and spew this sort of nonsense. They're all broke. You're not a multimillionaire. Right. If you, you were, you wouldn't be doing, you wouldn't be on TikTok talking about some. It's the way that like whiteness, that sort of emblematic thing where when you eat, it's kind of rooted, you know, and it, right? And it's rooted in racism. You're broke. I think, yeah, rich people don't do the identity politics and the be mad at the Indians and be mad at these people. They just stack and stay in their own lane. Stay in their own like, lane and like give to their family and that's it. But it's the brokies at the bottom fighting over hunger cues. You're bored, bro. So this is a clip of a guy who went to a protest and he starts interviewing the protest people. And the people here are protesting. Uh, they, they want refugees to come to their country. They're like, refugees have a home here. We accept you we welcome refugees and then he asks them can a refugee stay at your place okay. just look at the answers yes. i'm just wondering if you'd like to go down on a list saying you're willing to take the refugees into your home of course not. Uh, only problem is I rent. Um, just because you've got that refugee as well, yeah. yeah. I just wondering if you'd like to go on a list of people just willing to actually uh, adopt a refugee and take them into your home. What if I had any space? If you had any space. It says refugees welcome. Adopt a refugee and take them into your home? No, I'm sorry, I can't. You can't take one. I don't have. I don't have. I don't, don't have. I don't have a space. Don't have the space. I, I, you have a refugee stay at your house? Yeah, I don't mind. You go on the list. I don't know, yeah, I'm hunting, give me a little pig. Oh wait, I can't, because my house is only a little small and Amazing, then... that's what I was oh, waiting for. Thank you, darling. Excuse me, my love, will you go on my list of people that's willing to adopt a refugee? No, thank you. No, thank you. Excuse me, would you be willing to adopt a refugee into your home? Uh, 
No. No, I'm just here for my Instagram picture. Uh, no. No. So where should we put them then? Sorry. Where should we put them? So, uh, so I, I'm, I'm probably Don't worry. About, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. What are you talking about? Would you be willing to adopt a refugee? Um. I would be willing, yeah, if I had the space. Yeah. If you had the space? Yeah. No one got space. I'm sure a couch or even a carpet on the floor is better than wherever they're at. That's what I mean. It's like, I get the protesting and stuff, but if you don't actually like stand behind it, what are you doing it for then? The hottest thing that I see right now is virtue signaling and being an idealist. Yeah, ideally, let's welcome the refugees. Like, yes, like let the people who are suffering. It's a good concept. Have a safe space. I could get behind that. All right, where are we going to put them? Well, not my crib. So it's like when the Practicality actually hits you in the face. Like, we believe in this. Okay. So you're going to give up your. We need to let underprivileged people into colleges. All right, cool. Are you going to give up your scholarship? Well, no. So then shut the hell up. If you hold a welcome sign, then you take one home. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are you holding that for? My two extra rooms are currently being used as an office and a home gym. So fortunately, I don't have space. I love the one girl said yes, but when she saw you had to write it down, big no. This guy had you to the list. Oh, what <laughs> list are you talking about? If Noah tells me, hey, man i'm down on my last dollar like i've been struggling really bad and i'm like hey man i'll be here whatever you need i'll, I'll help you get through it could i stay at your crib for a week oh man turns out i got because my cousin my cousin's actually just moved in and my mom she's always like oh there's no people at the crib so so you don't really mean what you say but what you're saying sounds nice and i think that's 2023 in a nutshell save the turtles but are you actually going out of your way to save the turtle no no you just put it on your story for 24 hours yeah it's a good mm -hmm. hard post on ig yeah i confronted a girl one time on that i met this girl and she, in her bio it said it said something about ukraine it was like stand with ukraine and i said hey uh could you break down for me the ukraine thing like why did you put that in your bio just in solidarity i was like oh have you donated any money to them at all well no i haven't really done that and then i feel like people would say well at least they're ra raising awareness and that's part of it or whatever right if you don't support it fully it's like why are you even putting on onto other people to do she also didn't even know anything about it she just saw online oh Oh, everyone's saying this so i'll just do this yeah. so i feel good and yeah, her six homegirls posted it she's like well i don't want to look like a weird one so and i think she was smoking too at the time and i was like well you're smoking weed but i think like the people in i don't know i don't know if it was ukraine or where what it was for forty dollars for your weed or whatever could go a long way if you wanted to donate it uh, i'm good children have no respect for elders these days don't talk to me like that. You're not gonna hit him, though, is he? I'm a different type of breed. Like who you think he is? It's me. It's me. It's Michael Gorda, by the way. Michael Gorda. Hey. hey. Yeah, this is what probably middle school. This is rowdy. Oh Oh, he showed him. Oh my god. I blame the parents. Yeah. To be able to speak back to the bus. I, I mean, we all, I'm sure, have had some similar to that. I remember there'd be kids. I used to sit in the back, too, and they would speak up against the driver. And in my head, I was just like, why are you bothering them? Like, just. I think this is what happens when people who shouldn't have kids have kids. They don't discipline their children. And then children become these little entitled little feisty brats. Yeah. Don't put up. Fortunately, that's facts. Putting up my window. It's just your bus. Damn. It's sad, though, because, like, you know, these bus drivers don't get paid a lot. And they have to deal with. Oh, the most disrespectful rascals. rascals day in, day out. Oh, man. I always felt for them, too, because I remember every bus ride I've ever been on, like, it's, there's always still the handful that would push these bus drivers to their limits. Do you think that kid who was acting out, do you think his parents are like in a wonderful relationship together and it's a beautiful family unit? I feel like the at home is probably a little more chaotic um, and there's picking up these mannerisms from some, somebody. I think there's some sort of chaos at home, which then manifests chaos. Kids can get rowdy and like misbehave or yell or whatever. But at what point you're just screaming at your own bus driver? When I was in middle school, like there was like one or two 
two fights in the whole years I was there. Mm. Like, it was never as like rowdy like this, but I feel like with this generation and the technology and what they, they have access with, to, it's I like- with whatever. And I'm filming right now because if you even try to touch me right now, I keep screaming at you because I'm gonna sue you. I'm gonna get you fired. And you got all the kids screaming for the kid, teaming up on the, the poor teacher guy. Who's just trying to close the window. <laughs> so this is a clip of Rihanna, ASAP Rocky at Maybe this is the Met Gala or some fashion show. I say this one for two reasons. Number one, I thought it was interesting at the beginning here. She's walking up. Someone said, oh, what dress is that or something? She said, it's Valentino, baby. Expensive. Expensive. I mean, Rihanna's who everybody praises. I'm like, is that what we praising? Is that like the cream of the crop? We get it. Like, you're Rihanna. Like, yeah. I know. Like, you probably have the most expensive thing on. Everyone's calling Rihanna's name. And then the one lady just said, ASAP, I just want to call your name because nobody was calling it. Everyone's saying Rihanna. And Rihanna said, don't be hating. I'll get hate because I'm yeah. not a Rihanna bandwagon lover. These are the people that everyone idolizes. Yeah. Right when a random person said, hey, ASAP, like, let me show you some love. And Rihanna's like, don't be hating. Like, if someone's here, Rob, love your jacket. And then someone says something to me. And I'm like, worry about me, not Rob. Like, yeah, trying to yeah, keep yeah. the spotlight on me. I just thought it was a little bit distasteful. 